Hey y'all, welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. In this video, we're going to delve deeper into covalent bonds. Remember, covalent bonds share electrons. And remember, I'm here to help you make sense of the lecture that you had in class. So go get your notes and let's do some examples to show how nonmetals share electrons and we form single, double, and triple bonds. Let's get started. Let's look at how covalent bonds are formed. Before we do that, let's remember that covalent bonds occur when two elements share electrons. And this happens between two nonmetals. Before we talk about how covalent bonds are formed, let's just remember a little bit about Lewis dot structures. To draw Lewis dot structures, we've got to look at the valence electrons. So if we look at sodium, Na, it's in group one, so it has one valence electron. So to draw its Lewis dot structure, we would just put one dot on sodium. Let's look at magnesium. Magnesium is in group two. It's going to have two valence electrons. So here's its Lewis dot structure. Aluminum is in group three, three valence electrons. Carbon four valence electrons. So this is what carbon's Lewis dot structure would look like. Oxygen is in group 16. It's gonna have six valence electrons. So this is oxygen's Lewis dot structure. And then lastly, fluorine is in group 17, has seven valence electrons. And so fluorine's Lewis dot structure. Okay, so now that we remember how to do Lewis dot structures very well, let's keep going with covalent bond formations. We need a couple of rules first. The first rule is to count all of the valence electrons. All of the elements that are trying to bond together, we need to count their valence electrons and get a total. Now the second rule, the least electronegative, that means that's the one farthest away from fluorine, the least electronegative is in the center. Now, couple little side rules about this. If carbon is available, it is always the central element. Because if we go back and look at the Lewis dot structure of carbon, carbon has four valence electrons and they're all separate. So basically carbon can make four bonds all the way around it, always central when available. The opposite of that would be hydrogen halogens are always on the outside because hydrogen has one valence electron Halogens only have one available bonding site. Look, here's fluorine. Fluorine is a halogen. Pair, can't bond there. Pair, can't bond there. Oops, another pair. Oh, only one bonding site. So if you only have one bonding site, like hydrogen and halogens, you gotta be on the outside. So at this point, if we're following the rules, we should have our elements in place. Now we're gonna make single bonds all the way around. Single bonds, contain one pair of electrons. Double bonds contain two pairs of electrons. Triple bonds contain three pairs of electrons. We're gonna look at that more in just a minute. Okay, so we've got single bonds all the way around. Now we're gonna add electrons to the outside first, then go to the central atom, obeying the octet rule for every element. I know, what am I talking about? it's going to become much clearer. Just keep paying attention. If we add all of those electrons to the outside elements and to the central element, and the octet rule is still not being followed, that means we need to form double or triple bonds. Let's look at some examples. Let's look at H2. Remember, this is a diatomic molecule. Two of the same atoms bonded together. But let's show how those two hydrogens are sharing electrons. Okay, so one of our rules said that hydrogen always had to be on the outside. Well, we only have two elements, so there's really nothing central. They can be beside each other. Hydrogens each have one valence electron because they're in group one. And so in essence, what's happening here is each hydrogen is going to share the other hydrogen's electron. When they share those electrons, a bond is formed. You know, the sticky stuff that holds elements together. And so we get H2. Now, if we remember from electron configurations, here's hydrogen here, 1s1. It only has a s sublevel. And remember, s can only hold two electrons. So for hydrogen to obey the octet rule, remember the octet rule just means full valence shells, which most elements want eight. But hydrogen can only have two because it is in an s sublevel. So now this hydrogen 
thinks it has two electrons. This hydrogen thinks it has two electrons. Both hydrogens are happy because they're obeying the octet rule by having a full valence shell. Let's look at another example. Let's look at NH3. This is ammonia. You know that cleaning stuff that kind of doesn't smell very good? Ammonia. It's made out of one N and three H's. Nitrogen and hydrogen, both nonmetals, they're going to share electrons. This is how they would arrange. Remember, hydrogen, it only has one valence electron, so it only has one bonding site, and it has to be on the outside. So since we had three hydrogens, we just rounded them around nitrogen. So the next rule said that we needed to count valence electrons. Nitrogen has five, hydrogen has one. So that's five, six, seven, eight. Eight valence electrons. The next rule said that we need to form single bonds all the way around the central atom. Okay, so now we've formed single bonds all the way around. And remember, a single bond, that's worth two electrons. One electron from hydrogen, and one electron from nitrogen. Well, we need eight valence electrons. So far, we're representing two, four, six valence electrons. So now we need to start adding electrons from the outside in. The only thing is, hydrogen's good. Hydrogen only wanted two valence electrons. It has two valence electrons. Nitrogen, not so good. Nitrogen needs eight valence electrons. It only has six. Eight minus six, that's only two more. We're gonna put those two on nitrogen. Seven, eight. So this is how we would show a covalent bond for NH3. Nitrogen has three bonding sites, and we call these two pairs of electrons lone pairs, or non-bonding electrons. Let's look at another example. CO2, carbon dioxide. One carbon, two oxygens. Again, all of those are non-metals, so they're going to share electrons. Let's see how that's going to look. Now remember from our rules, carbon, when it's available, will always be the central atom. And so, since we have two oxygens, I just put them on either side of carbon. Okay, so the next rule says we need to add up the total valence electrons. Carbon has four, oxygen has six, but there's two oxygens. So six plus six is 12, plus four, is 16, 16 valence electrons. The next step said to add single bonds all around the central atom. Okay, so we've bonded oxygen to carbon, and that used two, four, four of our electrons. We are down to 12. So now we gotta start thinking about obeying the octet rule. We're gonna start from the outside in. So let's look at this oxygen here. Right now, one of oxygen's valence electron is connected with one of carbon's valence electrons to make this single bond. So oxygen feels like it has two. It really wants eight to obey that octet rule. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's see how many more electrons we used. Two, four, six. We're down to six more valence electrons. Oh good, we've got another oxygen. I bet that oxygen takes six more as well. Right now it has two, eight valence electrons, and we used the last of the electrons. But wait, carbon. Carbon only has four valence electrons. Two, four. It wants to obey the octet rule. It really, really, really needs eight valence electrons. So now we're looking at that last rule. When things don't add up at the very end, we gotta start thinking about double and triple bonds. First, you think about double bonds. So if we were to move a pair of these electrons here from oxygen, if we were to move those and let oxygen and carbon both share them and let those two electrons form a double bond, now carbon and oxygen both are sharing those electrons. And so carbon now has two, four, six valence electrons. 
Still not happy, but let's check on oxygen. Two, four, six, eight. Oxygen is still good. So let's jump to the other side. We can do the same thing again. If we were to grab those two electrons, move them over to between carbon and oxygen and share them between carbon and oxygen, carbon now thinks it has two, four, six, eight. Carbon's good. This oxygen, two, four, six, eight, also good. Everything is obeying the octet rule. This is what carbon dioxide looks like. Carbon double bonded to two oxygens. Let's try one last example. N2, another diatomic molecule. When you only have two elements, you can't really have anything central, so we're just gonna line those two nitrogens up. Okay, so we get everything lined up. Let's count valence electrons. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. So if we have two nitrogens, we have 10 valence electrons. Let's do a single bond between the nitrogen. Remember, a single bond is worth two electrons, so each nitrogen feels like it has two electrons. The next step is to start adding electrons until the octet rule is met. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whew, that was a lot of electrons. Let's count. Make sure we haven't used them all yet. We've used two, four, six, eight. Oh dang, we used eight electrons. We only had 10. We only have two left. So I guess let's go ahead and put them on nitrogen. Two, three, four. Again, if we get to the end of our valence electrons and everything's not satisfied, we got to start thinking about double and triple bonds. So if we take these two electrons and move them down and form a double bond, now this first nitrogen thinks it has two, four, six, eight, still good. This nitrogen has two, four, five, six, not quite. So let's take another pair and move and make a triple bond. Okay, let's check again. This nitrogen, two, four, six, eight, perfect. This nitrogen, two, four, six, seven, eight, also perfect. So here's an example of a triple bond. You just keep moving electrons until everything is satisfied. You may notice we didn't talk anything about polar and nonpolar. That's going to come up in a future video. Be on the lookout for that. Also, you need to know about ionic bonds. Go look in the description for a link to that tutorial. If this video was helpful, share it with your friends that might be struggling with chemistry. Also, Make sure you have subscribed so you get these future videos. I know you're trying to make better grades in chemistry. And by watching this video, you are on the right track. Until next time, bye y'all.